question, then I'm happy to answer that. Uh, just because there's so many people here, I want to make sure we get everybody's questions answered. We'll save any opinion pieces for our smaller group on Thursdays. You're live. Okay, welcome everybody to our March 23rd trade alert. Uh, today we have the same trade as Friday, and I believe we're up, I don't know, 5 to 10%. It's still a great trade to get into, and it's important because this is going to be the uh, the hedge that's going to allow us to buy equities on probably quarters on the dollar. So I do think uh, unless the Fed goes out and starts to actively buy stocks, uh, that this thing is going to keep crashing until the right catalyst occurs. And that catalyst is that uh, the real catalyst to find a bottom is that we have to develop herd immunity to the disease that's been spreading. And that will... Uh, either come slowly or quickly, depending on how our government reacts to this. So let's start off from the top, go through the trade alert in whole, and then I'll uh, take a look at some questions in the chat box, and then do uh, questions on the live chat. So again, please, uh, let's not do any opinions. Uh, when you get your chance on the mic, just questions. Uh, if you do want to join our smaller group on Thursdays. We have two webinars where we have a lot more time and a lot less people to, uh, to answer questions for. Okay, so in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday trading strategy, we're only playing US equities and our current alert is to own five different put options. These have different durations and different strikes. So what we can see here are the five recommendations uh, that we recommend. Now this is based on $75,000 of capital. And whether you're a basic member, a pro member, or a pro member with our boot camp, it's still the same recommendation in terms of how much risk you should have in these puts. Now, luckily today, uh, you can still get into them. And uh, I think there might be a little bit of bouncing up and down with all the money the Fed's throwing at the economy, but the big picture is that uh, GDP growth is going to crash no matter how much money they throw at it. And so our predictions really uh, will not waver. Uh, so take advantage of this if you missed out on it. And um, yeah, this probably won't last for much longer. So I'm going to continue issuing this same alert this week until the SPY has dropped below 210, maybe 200 at the lowest at that point. Uh, probably it'll be a little too late to get into these trades and you're better off just waiting for us to, uh, to have a bounce to re-enter this position. Um, of course, it'll be at obviously higher prices uh, or to wait for our buy alert to buy equities. And we're looking at healthcare, biotech, medical device, uh, military, um, also looking at some others in our pro membership, like getting oil and gas uh, super, super discounted prices because of Russia trying to crash those markets in what I believe is a coordinated attack against the United States. So to reiterate, we have per $75,000, we have one June 19, 2020, 220 SPY put. We have one September 18, 2020, $200 SPY put. We have one March 19, 2021, 180 SPY put. We have one January 21st, 2022, 140 SPY put. And our most leveraged aggressive trade is three March 18, 2022, $100 SPY puts. And this is regardless of what program you have, doesn't matter, uh, per $75,000, uh, this is the allocation. So it's just under $7,500 to build the entire set of hedges um, or 10% of the total portfolio. Now this gives us downside protection for uh, about 18 months, which is probably how long this stock crash is going to last unless uh, society decides to let the disease that's causing this just rip through uh, the population as fast as possible, which would be horrifying. And I'm not sure if they would do that or not. Um, if they continue this 
uh, on and off mode of trying to slow it down, turning on and off uh, lockdowns and things of that nature, then I think this will take 18 months minimum. Our pro membership with the boot camp uh, this morning is up 5.9. It's up a lot more now because our positions continue to go the right direction. And the pro membership, again, we have a lot of money riding on the US Treasury market from uh, ETF position to call options. Those are going in our favor today. Uh, plus, we have a uh, very profitable put option on the QQQ that we put in uh, several weeks ago and a long silver play. And the silver to gold ratio is just absolutely out of control right now. It's putting silver mines out of business, which means the spot silver could just skyrocket as demand for precious metals slowly but surely builds. Now, I do think we're a little early for all you gold bugs and silver bugs to bet the bank, uh, but I do see that being uh, the last bubble that gets popped. So stock market pops first, bond market's just gonna scream higher if my predictions are correct, and that's not corporate bonds, uh, which are on life support, because uh, the Fed's buying up those now. Uh, which is a complete joke. And, uh, but treasuries, which is also being on life support, uh, will be the real play, I believe, that will dominate returns for 100% of 2020 and quite possibly 2021. In fact, as long as this disease is wrecking havoc on the economy, uh, I think you'll see the US Treasury market is going to hog all of the world's resources and uh, it's going to be forced to do so thanks to our central bank and our gigantic military. So again, if you wanna learn how US government likes to go wreak havoc on foreign nations to drive capital into its bond market uh, and how the central bank has a sweetheart deal for the primary dealers like JP Morgan uh, that almost ensures that treasuries generate massive profits over the next several years, probably the next it could be more like the next three to 10 years, but uh, let's just be hopeful that this mess is dealt with in two years, uh, then join our pro program where we do dissect that on Thursdays. Uh, now, if you're not in the boot camp, you're still up, and again, up more than this would reflect as our positions will be going in our favor. Uh, that's a 1.2% return in March. Now, we had a huge 15% spike in profitability uh, several weeks ago when the TLT had spiked to 180. I think it's going to blow past that level. And so our trades are back on track. Um, so it's a little bit of a swing, but back on track. In the basic membership, we only play US equities. I was trying to catch some volatility in the S&P 500 and just barely missed it. We were a trade off when we had that uh, world's largest gain in a single day in the US stock market. Um, but we had puts, so considering the US stock market's down 30% and we're only down 3%, still a great return and we're positioned now to really make some very fantastic returns, betting down on US equities temporarily and then eventually buying key industries that will benefit. And again, the, the industries I believe that will highly benefit from this environment uh, will be uh, number one, healthcare. Uh, then we're gonna be looking at heavy investments into uh, biotech. Now, just imagine if this was an attack, uh, you know, it, it's super easy. You go catch a bat, you take all the viruses it has in it, like SARS, um, and then you start infecting lots of other animals, and then you go find the most deadly viruses, and then culture those and reinfect more animals over and over and over again. Uh, not only the Chinese, but also the United States, we have entire closet chests full of these different nasty viruses, and they could easily be sprung on society again. Um, so I think there has to be massive, massive money invested into uh, defense for um, vaccines that can beat viruses. And really at this point, we're in the dark ages of trying to solve vaccinations against viruses. So I think that you can count on the government 
uh, giving these scientists in the biotech sphere tons of money to accomplish this as it will be critical for our national safety and also getting out of this current predicament. Uh, so again, the stock market volatility is going to likely crash everything in the stock market, regardless of the sectors that should do well. So I'm looking for a VIX to pop well above 100, a huge leg down from here. And then we're going to start hopping into a handful of ETFs, which will include exposure to healthcare, biotech, medical devices, e-commerce, and then military-related re uh, products. So I think that will give us the first big jump up. And when you combine the put options we have, plus our strategy to get in cheap on these key sectors, I think that this basic program is going to have some very, very attractive returns in the coming 24 months. Uh, so a little patience will go a long way. I think a lot of people are going to think that a 50% crash is as low as we can go and get caught off guard, as I do suspect this can go uh, much lower than that. Now, can the Fed start buying stocks? Sure, maybe, but look at Japan. They, they did that in Japan and their stock market's still not back to where it was uh, when they were the... Uh, going to take over the world. They were bigger than the United States. Tokyo was valued at more than all of California. Um, so I'm not even sure if that would be enough or if they want to. I think the Fed's perfectly happy letting the stock market crash so that the banks can profit wildly on U.S. treasuries and then go buy up all the stocks on uh, probably quarters on the dollar. So 25% of the high is what I think we'll see banks loading up on stocks with a great big smile. It's criminal, but it is what it is. Uh, so these are the trades exactly that we issued on Friday and I'll likely continue to make the same exact trade alert all week until we get below 210, maybe 200. Uh, at that point, I'll say, hey, hold on, uh, let's catch a big bounce. Uh, remember, there's a lot of banks who make money selling puts and every time their puts go underwater, they have to cover that by buying stocks. When they cover that, we get big pops in the S&P 500 and those will be the opportunities to uh, enter these positions um, if you've missed out. But really right now is a great time to do it if you did. Uh, this is just screenshots of the same trades from Friday. Um, so we're using the asking price in our track record and not the mid price. Now, the further out we go in duration, the greater the spread between the bid and the ask. So uh, on this one, you can see the spread was only 20 cents, so or actually 15 cents. So that's pretty tight, not a big deal. Um, when we go lower and lower, you can see the spread gets more and more wide. So you might wanna start trying some limit orders. If you don't get filled right away, cancel the order, increase your bid, and let it sit for another five minutes. Um, so I'd go to the bid price, add maybe 10% uh, uh, to of the spread and try to get that filled. Um, so you can see on our screenshots, the one that this would be really useful for are these leaps. Uh, you can see this one has a huge spread. Now, again, I'm still quoting the ridiculous asking price so that nobody feels like I'm uh, getting a better price than they are. So I, I do think you can get filled closer to the mid uh, than having to use the actual ask price. And the worst one uh, was the March 2022 uh, really far out of the money put right here. Okay, our buy and hold portfolio has a few changes. I've adjusted our buy and hold portfolio, which is using no options and only makes adjustments on Monday to position for further downside in global equities. Here's our updated track record. We're up 0.92% for the year. Now in my buy and hold, so in our basic, in our programs using the options, everything, everything is broken into lots of 7,000 
or $75,000. Uh, this buy and hold was designed on a $100,000 portfolio. Uh, so I will uh, unfortunately have to have this discrepancy where if you're following our options, it's based on lots of 75K. Uh, but if you're following our buy and hold, it's easier to break it down in lots of $1,000. So again, this has no options and only uses ETFs. Uh, so here's our breakdown. We're heavy in treasuries. And uh, originally this was allocated to have 40% in the tab for US equities, 40% in the tab for US treasuries, $100 in commodities, which were playing precious, precious metals, another 10% in the emerging markets position. Uh, so right now, uh, we're over 40% in treasuries because those have appreciated so much. Uh, but here's the ratios that will make your life simple per $1,000. So I have now placed a six share position per $1,000 into the TECS, that's inverse tech, one share into the inverse banks, FAZ, I have two shares into the inverse Chinese ETF Yang. I have three shares holding the 30 year treasury, which is the TLT. I have five shares of the gold miner ETF and $166 in cash. So we're uh, set up to hold this position for quite some time until we think stock market is getting near a bottom. Uh, now as Asia starting to cope with the, the disease better than Western civilization? Absolutely. You can see they're all wearing masks. Uh, they really get it. And I think this has been something they're accustomed to for quite some time. So I may be, uh, my thing with the Yang is that I believe the United States is going to retaliate and start restricting capital into different products that have exposure to China. So I was doing some research on that. What happens if, for example, FXI, which is the large cap Chinese ETF, were to go to zero? What would that mean for your put? Essentially, it means you would get the full value of the strike. So you get the maximum potential profit. Uh, so even though China might be coping with this uh, crisis better than uh, Western civilization, they might quickly be completely banned from US equity markets, which could result in the Yang uh, hitting a maximum profit target, uh, which would be much higher than it is currently. So I, I'm not sure if we'll sell that any sooner than other ETFs. Now, administration is barely hinting that they're upset with China, at least Trump says, I'm a little upset with China because uh, they could have told us about this earlier, but hey, they're buying some agricultural products on the phase one deal. So I think that tune will change uh, sooner than later. So we'll see how that develops. Uh, but bottom line is uh, equities are going far lower and I believe funds will be forced into government bonds uh, to cope with this crisis. So that's our positioning in the buy and hold. Uh, you basically have $844 to build this set of ETFs and 166 in dry powder. So at some point we'll close out these inverses and flip into, uh, again, those ETFs that we really like, uh, considering that the government's gonna have to hand over trillions of dollars into that group of sectors. Now, e-commerce doesn't need a bailout. They're already reaping the reward and we'll see just how much they fall uh, in this ocean of uh, companies that are going to be really hurt. Now, is the government doing everything they can to bail out all these companies? Sure, but it's just not going to replace uh, true demand. And um, so I just think the overall supply demand chains are just wrecked. We might have a bit of a rush to, uh, to buy stuff in uh, this quarter. Uh, but what happens when people aren't at work, when labor costs are rising, uh, we really got a mess on our hands. Okay, let's look at some questions in the box. 
Ernest says SPY is down 3%, why are puts not up substantially? So we have out of the money puts, so we need a big move for them to really appreciate. Yeah, and also the, uh, as you can see, Ernest, in the trade alert, uh, these are, uh, you know, we're not doing a weekly option that expires this week. <laughs> yeah, so we got a lot of time premium. Okay, Ron says, I'd like to do GLD call. Yeah, so Ron, I'm not going to give out special trade alerts, um, but I, I do like that trade and I will be making trades like that. So I just uh, recommend that you wait for it. Uh, but yeah, I had the same idea in mind, Ron. So I'll, I'll help you when the time comes. And that'll be a Thursday trade for our pro members. Uh, but we're, we're thinking the same. Great minds thinking alike. I wouldn't rush that trade right now. First, the money has to get uh, printed. Then it has to go to whoever's going to be handed it off from the government and the Fed. Then it has to work its way through uh, society. Then we have to see inflation. Then you start getting a big push in gold. And all through that, you're going to have central banks trying to scare the crap out of uh, precious metal investors, which guess who can do that easily? Central banks have all the... Uh, Gary says he can't open the link how to fill out the spreadsheet. Um, Ryan, can you try to support Gary on, a, on that? Hey, I just got back in here. My internet went down. Okay. Gary says he can't get the link for how to fill out the spreadsheet. Tony Collins. Are we about to issue new spreadsheets? No. So the boot camp. So we, right. the, the boot camp link he's saying isn't working. All the other links on that particular page, I can open. That one, uh, it just won't open. I tried it on Safari. I tried it on uh, what's the other one? Chrome. I tried it on. OK, on no Apple. worries. We'll get, we'll get you a fixed link. Thanks. Okay. For, thanks. Uh, Tony says, why GDX and not GLD? GLD is hosted by HSBC Bank, which I don't trust. So I'm willing to do some some leveraged option trades with low risk. I'm not willing to put capital behind that ETF. Um, GDX are American Canadian companies. So a lot safer for buy and hold with the underlying. Okay, uh, Pat says the Fed could start to buy S&P 500 to support the market. They could, uh, but Japan did that, didn't help. Oscar Orego says, do these puts regard to me for having the basic? Yes, it's for all members based on every 75,000. Pat says, what is your opinion that the market will close from trading? Is that even possible? Um, well, they tried that in the Philippines and it opened back up down 25%. So I don't think they'll do that. Yeah, and the last time we did in the United States, we went limit down after we opened back up after 9-11 too, so. That would only help our positions. Deb says, what about investment grade bonds? Fed backstopped is buying the LQD ETF. Um, well, it's definitely gonna help the corporations have access to capital. So that's good for corporations, uh, but I don't think that changes our strategy. Okay, I think we're caught up on that. Let me go to the bottom now. I see three new messages. Uh, Kathy says, I missed something. Uh, yeah, so I adjusted the buy and hold. So let me go to the buy and hold. Here's, it's based on, so I was looking at the way my buy and hold is structured and it's an even $100,000. So uh, this is how I have the buy and hold structured today per thousand. Uh, you can see that. So we have inverse tech, inverse banks, inverse China, long the 30 year treasury and long gold miners with 166 in cash. So I do apologize. I know you had this all based on lots of 750, uh, but after looking at my buy and hold, uh, it is based on a $100,000 portfolio.
Uh, Scotty says spy puts. Uh, Vix is calm today. Yeah, so, so guys, those puts are really, uh, if you look at the price targets, um, we're, we're trying to get sub, we're going way lower on the SPY before those are where we want them to be uh, doing their job. So yeah, we, we need to go sub 180. After we go 180 is when we're gonna start letting loose of these puts. So if we go back to trade alert, um, I have a target for each one, which is about $20 below the strike. So uh, the first one will let go at around 200. The second one we'd let go at around 180. The third we'd let go at around 140. And again, the caveat is if we thought we'd hit a bottom, I'd let them all go at once. Uh, and then it goes lower and lower. And so they, they provide two purposes. One is obviously just to make money with a small risk, uh, but two is it's gonna give us the confidence to start buying ETFs that we believe have huge upside potential from the, uh, from the stimulus plans being passed in the government uh, right now. They're fighting over it right now. Yeah, I think we're up about 10% or so, five to 10% on the puts. Uh, but really, it's when you go below the strike and go into the money is when these will really uh, ramp up. No, I wouldn't waste money on miners. They are a bunch of crooks as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it takes a long time to build mines and to get the gold out and then to have all the uh, infrastructure and money in place to do that. So you need a ton of capital to do that. So yeah, GDX is the best way to do it. In our boot camp, we have a play on spot silver. So the silver miner is going to go bankrupt because uh, spot silver is so low. After those silver miners go uh, really have some trouble here, then you could see spot silver spike. Uh, looks like somebody's been listening to Chris Martinson, Honey Badger, love it. Uh, but those guys, I think, are way early on the whole gold silver play. A lot of people, I believe, are going to get caught off guard thinking the big move right now is gold when it's going to be treasuries. Yeah, they'll pass laws to let, let them to allow the Senate to vote from home. I already talked about that. Yeah, so Mark B, so it's, you know, we've looked at the circle of life for the treasury. Uh, and I'll cover that again on Thursday. But yeah, I think you'll see the bond market just dominates all capital for the foreseeable future. Because it has to. If it doesn't, then, then we have a takeover. And... Uh, Okay, David A, as a strategy reg regarding the April puts, we're long protecting the TLT longs. We roll those higher as TLT. Uh, yeah, so no changes to our Thursday play. We have that put, uh, which provides just, it's kind of like, that's our apps. If, if we're gonna have a huge allocation to the TLT, which we do, 40%, then I, because we've seen risk parity funds blowing up and creating some volatility, then I do prefer to have that put protecting us against a massive drop off. The other big concern I have for the treasury market in the short term, not the long term, is that the issuance is going to increase potentially tenfold. So we have a 10 times increase in supply. Could the banks decide we need to reset yields to be a little bit higher before we start this big push? Sure, so that's a big risk and why I like to uh, to just keep that put. So, so yeah, no changes in our TLT position. Uh, Murray says, if the stimulus bill passes, will we take a big short-term hit on the SPY puts in TLT? I doubt it. Um, yeah, I mean, we could go hand these guys 
a bunch of funny money, but it doesn't change the profit loss for these corporations, which is going to be massive losses. They're looking at negative 25% GDP for the next two quarters in uh, America. So that's, that's bullish for treasuries and bearish for stocks. Yeah. Great question though, Murray, but uh, uh, great response too, Jason. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, guys, any, anyone want to go ahead and uh, unmute your microphone? Uh, oh, um, and, uh, Mike Hogan just posted a question in the chat too, Jason. I would start from the top until you've used up no more than 10%. So I would spend no more than 3000 And just do the first few until you run out of capital is what I would personally do if I was trading a 30K portfolio. So you could probably afford to get like these three probably, or maybe just these two, which could be enough to have the hedge to give you the confidence to buy the uh, ETFs we're looking at, the healthcare biotech. Okay, Great good. question, Mike. Thank you for presenting in the uh, the chat. 101 uh, live, I think that's a record. Very oh. nice, very nice. Um, and just real quick, guys, uh, I've had a lot of people text me questions uh, and call in about questions, guys. This is why we have the webinar every day, okay? We literally dedicate eight to 10 hours of our time uh, to answer questions live in the webinar. So if you guys have any questions about investments, uh, please reference them here live, okay? That's why we dedicate that much time to you guys every week. Uh, let's go with Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I, I haven't taken those... Um those puts on the S&P that you recommended Friday and today. And the reason I haven't done that is I'm sitting and I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm sitting on July puts on the S&P um, 500 at like 325, 325 put a 308 and a 310. And there's uh, 10 of them total. So I'm not sure. Um, if I should, they're, they're so, I bought them so cheaply. I'm not sure if I should buy the, the longer term ones yet is what I'm getting at, I guess. I'm trying to figure out how to transition to your, your, the philosophy that you have there. And I, I don't want everybody else to listen in. I just, it's my. No, that's personal. a good question. That's a great question. So yeah. Pat's in a profitable position. He shorted the market, uh, but when's your duration end? No, hold on. I'll just tell you one second. You bear one one second. Um, I believe I have I have five puts. Um, I have a total of ten puts. I'm sorry, and the once a 320 put that ends in May. I have uh, and there's two contracts on that. I got five contracts on a June 306 put, and I got five contracts on a 309 June put. So they're and they're they're so cheap. I bought them at like somewhere between eight and ten dollars a share. So I'm trying to figure out: do I ride them and then move mm -hmm. over? I feel like I'll be overweighted, is what I'm getting at in the spy. Yeah. So and Pat, real quick, what was your total allocation and your total uh, trade size? I think that'll be helpful for Jason to understand as well. Yeah. So my total allocation is uh, I have forty. I have 40 in, um, and the, the, the value of the, um, of the total 40, I have other stuff that's not these spies. So the, the total allocation across those three spies is, um, $12,000. And right now they're worth uh, 60, 70, 80, $90,000. Okay. And, uh, so you got, and how much, uh, how much equity are you long? I am sitting in cash with uh, 45,000. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, 54,000, 54,000. And then uh, also, you, uh, Pat, you're going to scale to, was it 200 or 300,000 here pretty soon? Yeah, yeah. I have other money sitting in, this is just my cash account. This I have 401k stuff sitting separately. That's got to get transition over. That's correct. And I have to move some of this over as well to that. So- Okay, well, yeah, let's just think big picture. So just 
uh, so you yeah. have so you have uh, ninety thousand in uh, puts with mm -hmm. duration through May, July, May and June. So most of them are June. So ten contracts are June, and, and two of them are are May. Okay, and then you have fifty four thousand cash, and you have two hundred thousand in long equities. Yeah, I have a whole bunch of. I was also because the spy was getting expensive. I put it. Uh, a bunch of Coca-Cola knowing that they wouldn't be able to deliver uh, because everything would be closed and all the live events and stuff like that. So I have, I did the exact same thing with Coca-Cola back at when they were at 52, they're now at 38. So again, I have a ton of value between those as well. So it's really, I'm, I've shorted the stock market either through the S&P or through this Coca-Cola short, all these Coca-Cola shorts or puts, they're not shorts. So I'm, I'm very heavily weighted. Um, You've got good, you have short term protections. That's good. Yeah, so here's what I would personally do if I were in your shoes. Uh, number one, I wouldn't be long any equities, period. I'm not, yep. Okay, good. No, yeah. Uh, two, I would, you still got a little time. So uh, this one's coming up soon. Here's what I would tell you in, in, t in 14 days, mm -hmm. this is probably going to be 150,000 deaths, which is crazy. Okay. okay. So I, I think you would hold on to it. I would probably hold on to that a little bit more. Okay. Um, I would probably, I probably still get this. Cause if you want to be able to buy up all the stocks I want to buy, and have the right hedge to protect you. You need yeah, you need some more duration. So you don't have the duration. Right, exactly. And you're, you're up so much on your puts anyway, so you're kind of using the house's money. So I would still feel confident. And the VIX is down today. Uh, you know, VIX at 63. It's funny to say VIX 63 is cheap, huh? Yeah, right, exactly. So this is probably this could be the last week you could buy these puts that give you the confidence to buy stocks. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think this problem will be solved by the time your puts expire. Okay, so I'll start buying those puts with my 54, leave these here, and then start to pull out of them like in a week or two. Yeah, so you could, you could for $7,500, you could buy this whole set. Yeah, okay, that's so, it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, everybody. No, no yeah, I that, think that's great. That was uh, that was seriously one of the best questions with the right context into the question. That was that was phenomenal. Great question, Pat. Right, thanks. Great contribution. That that helps everyone else think through things too. So awesome, awesome job there. Uh, Murray says, "Do you think China is full of sh crap?" Yes. Um, <laughs> no, he says, "Is it really accurate that China is getting back to work?" Oh man. Yeah, I think China's trying to screw with us, to be frank. So, hey, Jason, this is Mark. I uh, chatted with a few buddies from uh, China and Hong Kong, and they are getting back to work. Um, like, for instance, um, one of the factories that that these guys work with is uh, is at full capacity. They're they're at one hundred percent again in Hangzhou. Um, but there's still a lot of people working from home and, and subway traffic is picking up a lot. Um, but you know, everybody's wearing masks of course. And so they say that things are starting to get back to normal. At least that was from a Shanghai perspective in Hong Kong. Uh, they're starting to get numbers rising again. So that's causing some problems. Um, but they are, so, that, so they may go back to working at home, but they have been working in the office. Okay, good. Good to know. So yeah, even though they are getting back to work, that really doesn't change the way we're playing the markets at this point. Shelly says, how do I introduce my friends to your program? Uh, and Mark, I owe you a, a Amazon gift card for, for, your, uh, for referring Roy. So I'll, I'll get that out to you tomorrow. Thank you. Shelly, we- And you owe Roy one for Pat. <laughs> and I owe Roy one for Pat. Very good. Uh, Pat's so not in quite yet, but yeah, we'll, we'll owe him one for Pat though. <laughs> nice. Very good. 
Uh, yeah, Shelly, so we, we, it's not a huge gift card, but we do send out gift cards to referrals. So thanks so much. And uh, Dean will get a hold of you for that. Uh, David A says, thanks for that question and answer. Perry says, China reports new cases from people coming back into the country. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. So what do we have exposed to China? We have emerging market ETF put option for our pro members and our buy and hold, you have the Yang. So I believe that the United States is gonna punish the hell out of China in the near future. So I don't really care if they're getting back to work or not. I think they're gonna start putting um, sanctions against China in every way, shape and form possible. And they're gonna blame this pain that America has uh, rightfully on the communist party. So I think that's what happens next. So I love being short their stock market because of that fact. And um, it hasn't even crashed that much. I mean, you think of the impact of just China shutting down for 30 to 60 days, that's huge, that's huge. They could get back to work and it doesn't matter um, because we're gonna have, we're still waiting for US, as soon as the US hits the bottom is when I'll flip the switch on wanting to bet up on equities. Um, and not necessarily when China does, but very good question. And I am certainly watching that. Um, but yeah, China's really designed very well for, for exactly what's played out here. Um, and I think they're gonna start withholding key supplies. We'll see. Yeah, and the, you know the other thing too, Jason is uh, look, we you guys we haven't even started to see the job cuts here. It's going to be so ugly, and uh, a lot of people are kind of uh, numb to the fact that one in five jobs created in the last five years was in tourism, uh, hospitality, and travel. So bye bye, uh, and unfortunately, that's going to be million, you know, twenty to a hundred million, maybe more jobs across the world. <laughs> so. Hey, Frank hey, says, oh, go ahead. Yeah, this is Tony Colon. Uh, just a technical question on thinkorswim. Sure. Uh, when, when I order, uh, when I place an order, my my minimum comes up as uh, as 10 contracts. How do I lower that? Just click on the, uh, the 10, Tony. Just click on the actual 10, erase it, and then just enter in. Maybe it's, you know, one. Uh, I think it's going to be one in your example. So yeah, just uh, go to that screen, uh, erase the 10, and, and then just enter one with your keyboard. Yeah, I understand that. I'm talking about the default. Can I change the default? Oh, uh, call Think or Swim for that. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but I'm sure you can change it. Yeah, I'll look into that too, Tony. I, I, um, I'm not sure, but I, I just got a new PC, so I'm going to install Think or Swim, and I'll be able to have that live on our webinars uh, uh, starting Wednesday, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, Anwar says, can you explain the relationship between the VIX and the QQQ? Sure. So the VIX is a index relative to the SPY, which is correlated to the QQQ. And so we got to go back to science class. Just think of speed. Okay. We're going 100 miles per hour. Uh, or acceleration, we're going from zero to 100 miles per hour. So the VIX is a measurement of acceleration. So it's the change of price. And so if the rate of change is accelerating, the volatility index increases, which makes the relative value of options increase. So in general, we wanna buy put options when the market is deaccelerating and thus the VIX is slowing down. Uh, and we want to sell options when the market is accelerating. Now the VIX can actually go up even if the stock market's going up. So if it's going up at such a fast pace that the rate of change has increased, then that can make the VIX go up. Usually the VIX goes up when markets go down and it goes, uh, the VIX goes down when markets go up or flat. Uh, but it can even be just going down slower than it had been previously. So again, the VIX is a measurement of acceleration and we wanna time selling options 
when that VIX is accelerating and we want to time buying options when the VIX is deaccelerating or going down in general. And it's all relativity. Uh, so go pick up some good uh, physics books and you can really dive into that if you like, but that kind of simplifies it for you. Just, just there's a really, hello first. Uh, hey, Anwar. Hi, How's how going? are you today? Doing well. The new shiny day here. Very good. Uh, just the relationship between the VIX and QQQ or the VIX is an, is an indicator to all the stocks? The VIX is based on the S&P 500 or the SPY and the QQQ is uh, just kind of like a concentrated, mainly tech piece of the SPY. So they're highly correlated. Okay. Uh, Ron nice says, question, yeah, very good question. Very important. So VIX is going up, sell options. VIX is going down, buy options. Kind of just, of course, it's all relative to, to the, you know, to the past. Uh, usually I would say VIX at 60 is high, but now VIX at 60 is low. Uh, okay, Ron says, could I get the link to the recording today? Uh, yeah, so the link that you clicked on to get to this live webinar, after it's been closed out, will turn in automatically to the link to, to replay it. Uh, Jason, I've tried it um, several days and it won't. It's uh, Friday, Friday we had an issue. Today we won't, I promise you. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, Friday we had a technical issue. So your answer to the to, to me on the QQQ will be recorded and I could listen to it again? Yes, sir. So yeah, at the end of this presentation, go back to your email and click it and you can replay today's recording as many times as you like. Yep. Okay, Anwar has a good question. Do you want us to buy healthcare, medical stocks, aerospace now? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the alert when. These put options we're buying today will give us the hedge or the protection we need to simultaneously buy those stocks at the right time. So not only do we hope to generate profit for our portfolio from today's put options, uh, we also want to own those puts at the same time we buy stocks so that we have a hedge to protect us against any downside risk. So if you buy something that's crashing, the momentum is for it to continue to crash. So I do expect that when we do buy these stocks, they will be crashing. So as the underlying ETF we purchase will be falling, those put options will be going up in value. So it'll, it'll give us the confidence to buy stocks that are uh, look very scary at that moment in time. You so, Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, you want to know when? Yes. It's, it's going to be when I think we have developed a solution to the crisis. Um, so there's two, two strategies to, okay, so the first thing you got to realize is that we can't stop this disease from spreading, okay? Once you accept that, then you have, a, the, you can understand the gravity of the problem we're facing. Okay, so then it's a question of, does the government let this rip through society as fast as possible? Or do they try to delay it as long as possible? And that's gonna be the answer to when we hit a bottom. With the stimulus package in the United States coming up? No effect, Absol that? absolutely zero effect on the stock market. Really? Oh. The only thing that matters is whether they let this rip through society quickly or slowly. Period. End of story. So the market will not jump? No. The okay, I'll repeat this. The only thing that makes a difference for the equity market is whether the government lets this disease spread quickly or slowly. Period. Okay. No, I'm, 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 I'm asking about the markets when there are billions of dollars pumped into it. There will be no re, real effect on it to 
No. Oh, I, I, no. I know yeah, that's what you said, no, but it's, okay. I'm surprised. It's uh, mathematical ratios, Anwar. Um, size of the stock market to what they can inject. It's just, it's hilarious. That they're, yeah, there's nothing they can do. Oh. <laughs> and Oops. look at Japan as your example, as Jason said earlier. Yeah, so, so here's the bottom line, Anwar. Until we're back to full production, GDP is going to be lower or negative. So that's really all you need to know with that. Uh, mm. so, so I, you know, personally, I, uh, here's what I think the government will do, just to answer your question more uh, clearly. I think they'll slow it down for a few weeks, and then we're going to start to see our economy just implode. And we're going to have no choice but to force everyone back to work. And at that point, it's going to rip through society quickly. So that's unfortunately what I think we're going to try to smooth, you know, make that curve go flat. And then we we'll realize that we can't really do it because we're all going to starve. Hmm. So I think you got a, a three to six months minimum to wait before we get a bottom. And, and if, if somehow we, we decide to put human life before economics, it could be as long as 18 months. Uh, Jason, Tony. Hey, Tony. Yeah. So how much value do you put on, on the, the, the chloroquine and, and uh, 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 and solution? Not much. And I have, by the way, I have the, I have that person. Yeah, I know. I heard you on Friday or Thursday. Like yeah, so it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop the problem of people getting sick. Yeah, uh, Jack actually, Jack Kent sent in an email uh, on that this weekend too. So great, great questions, guys. Though, and and way to be aware, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, you know that's that's a medicine that's not only been around a long time. It's if that was a miracle cure, do you think we would have a tenfold increase in deaths from two weeks ago? Let me ask you this. Do you think that me and you are the only ones who know about this drug and that the doctors around the world don't? Yeah, okay. but it, it's a test. A, the test it's a new, it's it's a not new the, disclosure. No, it's not new at all. I knew about this in uh, late January. So oh, you the, did? So did all the doctors. Yeah, it just um, the media started really blowing it up uh, last week. Fox, uh, the one of the gals on Fox was reporting about it last week. And that's what uh, Jack Kent sent me the information on. But uh, yeah, it's only great question though. Um, way to way to be aware. It's kind of like I don't know what a good comparison is, but uh, there, there's nothing that could stop this. Unfortunately, uh, a vaccine. They need a vaccine. And the bad news with the vaccinations is that they couldn't solve SARS, which this is highly correlated to. Uh, or MRSA. Yeah. So, two deck. We're you got to realize we're in the dark ages of dealing with viruses. Well, look, just to give you uh, an update: thirty-three thousand four hundred fifty-three cases versus prior days fifteen thousand two hundred sixty-eight cases, according. To the CDC, those are U.S. coronavirus cases. Ah, uh, so double, over double. In one day. Yeah, and uh, Tony, did you see the Italian death rate? It crossed ten percent oh, yeah. this morning. Yeah, are you, are oh, you yeah. prepared for that? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I, I think it can help. I think. Um, I think it. You know, I, I I never forget watching the video. It was very helpful. I got some myself. Um, but this is, you know, how does a little virus hop into your cell, hijack it, take over uh, the, the machinery inside of a cell and start reproducing proteins, RNAs, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert biologist, but it's, it's fascinating. It's way beyond the technology and science we have. And so we're kind of shooting into the dark, you know? Um, so, so, you know, really the solution, how do we get out of this? We let this rip through society. A lot of people die. 
and we get back to work. At hey, the end Jason. of the day, that's what has to happen. Um, and whether it happens quickly or slowly determines when we hit a bottom. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm more of a technical uh, guy when it comes to doing this analysis. And I've been watching the SPY while we've been talking. Um, I, I see that that it's going to go up to 228. I, and I bought, I bought in uh, while this was uh, down at the two. 220s. <clears throat> I have another uh, 75k to put in. You think I should buy another put the series um, while it's up here? Because I can see a flop's going to come here at 12:30. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm not. Um, first of all, I'm not big on. Uh, looking at patterns in the sand to try to predict the future. Uh, but yeah, so I am <laughs> r risk management and asset allocation, I believe are what's critical and then understanding what, what, what's going to cause big decisions. And so, so yeah, per 75,000 following portfolio builder, I endorse owning this set of put options. So even if I don't buy the TLT and the GDX, uh, you're just saying just go ahead and buy the TLT and the GDX and, and then do the series of puts. Yeah, this is regardless of whether you're basic or pro. Per yeah. $75,000, I endorse this trade okay. recommendation right here. Because it serves okay. two purposes. Number one, it, it should be very profitable in itself. Uh, but two, it's going to be the hedge you need to have confidence to buy ETFs, if I'm correct, as they're crashing. So it really serves two core purposes. Yeah. And yeah, do I think the SPY is going to bounce up and down? Yeah. I mean, if you think of it, um, the insiders, the super rich, what do they want to do? They want to sell these stocks at as high a price as they can uh, and buy it at the bottom. And they want to get into U.S. Treasuries because they know the scheme that the central bank has done in every recession for the last hundred years, uh, like clockwork. And so, um, here, let me just pull up the scheme that the banks do. You got to realize all of these governments around the world, whether it's Republican or Democrat, I don't care which political party you subscribe to, they're all. They're all at the, uh, they're all under the gun by the central banks because they control the money supply. And so when you figure that out and you're not so concerned about the political theater, uh, you can understand that they're not gonna punish themselves. Okay, so the central bank's not gonna punish the primary dealers who have to buy the, the bonds. They're just not gonna, do That'd be like shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so they're not going to do that. So this is the circle of life. Let's just look at this. Once you get this, Okay, so you can use that uh, two arrows to the right to full screen it under the X. Let me go to the real website, sorry. Nope. Okay. All right. So the, you see these gray bars? These are all the stock crashes for the last uh, 70, 80 years. Okay. Now what has happened to the red line? That's the federal funds rate in every single recession slash stock crash. The rate has gone down. 
right? They cut interest rates. That's their go-to policy. Why? Why do they cut rates during stock crash? Why do stock crashes seem to thrive during periods where rate cuts or where interest rates are being lower? Okay, so you can't find a single stock market crash or recession where the Fed didn't drop rates uh, significantly lower. Okay, so what, why do they do that? What's the mechanism? How does it pay out? Okay, so the circle of life for bond investors. Okay, now remember the primary dealers, that's JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, all the big banks who own the Federal Reserve. There's nothing federal about it. Okay, step one, the Fed fund rate is dropped to zero or significantly lower than the, the going rate of a treasury. Okay, so it's gonna allow primary dealers to borrow capital for either free or less than the interest rate paid by US government bonds. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, they pick up the auctions from the US treasury at the going yield, which needs to be greater than the cost they've borrowed for. So in this case, federal funds rates just a tad above zero. Step three, the primary dealers, and they've added some new features in the last uh, two stock market crashes to make this even a better deal for these banks uh, called the repo market. So now your primary dealer can borrow for free, buy up a treasury with a positive yield, then he can hand that treasury to the repo market uh, and borrow cash at a low interest rate using the treasury as collateral. Okay, so, all right, so we borrowed for free, we're getting a positive yield, but now we have no money at the bank, so that's a problem. So let's take the treasury, hand it back to the Fed and borrow some dollars with it at a low interest rate. What's the next step? Now the primary dealer is gonna take that money he's borrowed at a low interest rate and lend it to broker dealers at a higher interest rate. So think about JP Morgan's sweetheart deal. Borrow for free, buy a positive yielding treasury, lend it to the Fed for, a, uh, for a, in return getting cash at a low interest rate, turn around and lend that cash to the broker dealer for a higher interest rate. Okay, and that's where you go let all the hedge funds and mom and pops borrow from TD Ameritrade or Interactive Broker or whoever you're with. Okay, uh, so the Fed likes this because it's helping support all asset classes, but the primary dealers again, are they're winning, they're winning again, and then you're gonna see they're gonna win a third time Okay, so as all this is happening, the Fed is now also using quantitative easing. So if anybody uh, has to sell their treasury, don't worry, the Fed will buy it from you. So there's no risk of yield spiking. And because of this environment, this self-fulfilling prophecy, the primary dealers trip over one another to fight over buying these bonds because it's a great deal. And this over time drives that yield lower which means the value of the bond has appreciated. So the longer they hold these treasuries, the bigger the profit will be when they finally cash out to the Fed, not to the open market. So if we realize that this is not a video game where we can type in a cheat code and get free money in the economy, that there are limited resources and that this this deal, this sweetheart deal that the Fed is giving banks is gonna cause most of the resources of the world to flow into bonds. Okay, so it's gonna come at a cost to other assets. So this is just gonna drown every other asset uh, that exists until they stop doing this because it's risk-free profits for the biggest players. So that's, th that's the real reason why when you see rate cuts that are this significant, and you see that the Fed's uh, pumping money to essentially guarantee these treasuries earn a profit. And then you realize, hey, there's limited resources in an economy and unemployment's about to skyrocket up, that we're gonna have limited economic output. 
then it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize which asset's probably going to get hit and which asset's going to likely appreciate. And so bottom line, uh, probably the only asset that will have any positive return in the short order is going to be the bond market. Now, does it make sense if we're increasing the money supply for gold and silver to go up or Bitcoin and Ethereum? In the long run, yes, but in the short run, maybe not. So that's why I continue to urge gold bugs to be careful, to have tiny exposure and to follow me as I carefully tiptoe into those markets because the central banks are gonna punish people who don't buy what they want. They want you to either buy stocks or bonds and that's it. The last thing any central bank wants you to buy is gold, which is absolutely worthless for the overall economy. Uh, so I think you'll see that trade may be a bit early for everybody wants to play that market. Uh, so I have a question sure. about this. Yeah. So I, I completely 100% followed the whole thing and I completely see the, the thing. And I, I mentioned this last time and um, what I'm trying to understand is we just went down one full percentage point or hundred basis points. And I mentioned last time, usually you need another 400 basis points. Does that throw off what the Fed can do or what the banks can do as far as predicting how they're going to react because there's now we're now at zero or close so close to zero that the my question is is do they need that interest rate cut to happen over time the 500 basis points or do they um, is just the drop in the 100 basis points enough for them to have the same reaction that we're expecting in the last I don't know you had 12 different recessions or something like that up on the screen. So yeah, we got to understand the magnitude of the capital that's been lost already. Yeah. Let's just say we go back to normal tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How much, how many trillions of dollars were lost globally from what's taken place so far? Yep. So, so yeah. Uh, so here's the product we're playing right here. Oh. We're playing this product right here, the third year. Mm-hmm. Okay, we haven't raised the, we have to raise trillions of dollars and that investment must be rewarded. Okay, it's gonna be funded by primary dealers and central banks around the world. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so we haven't even started uh, raising the capital and I would suspect we see other central banks start to go into negative territory and allow our front end of our curve to go negative and I think we could see the 30 year get to no less than half. I think it'll go to no less than right here. And what you're saying is that just that movement is almost like taking another 400 basis points down is, is. So you're saying that you're going to, what you're saying is we're predicting that this thing's going to go down, which I agree with, but I'm just trying to understand the 400 part, like, is this, is this tied directly to the 400 that we're missing in this particular instance? Just trying to, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I, you're saying that, Hey, it took all these huge rate cuts in the past to, uh, to get out of recessions. Um, I'm not saying we're going to cut interest rates four or 500 basis points. Okay. Um, no, I know that. Yeah. All I'm saying is that the, we have trillions to fund and it hasn't even started yet. Right. And most of it's going to be raised in the long end. So I see, I see what so, you're saying. So yeah. the people, so the banks have to be rewarded. They haven't even made the investment yet, much less got rewarded. So, uh, so this is going to hog the resources of the world and the, the U S military, you know, that's a, partnership with the banks. They're going to go wreck havoc all over the world to help incentivize capital flows into U.S. treasuries. So until they're done raising, until, we, until we're not overloading the treasury, and so here's what we're start. look at this. We're starting to see this grow. This is the upcoming auctions. So again, we have limited resources in our economy. Economic output is has been beaten down. So it's not going to be anywhere near what it was. 
so yeah, so we have to go raise trillions of dollars. It's probably going to take two years during that period. This is going to hog all the resources of the economy, not just our economy, of every economy. And with our massive military, you can bet your bridges they're going to do everything in their power to make this the single most attractive investment. So until they're done raising trillions of dollars for all this crazy stuff they're doing, uh, this has to be where banks put their money and where they're rewarded. And they control that uh, with this little scheme. So they already cut the rates to zero. So the mechanism to, to generate profits is in place. If I can borrow at zero, get a treasury that has a positive yield, lend it to the Fed for cash, and then make another profit handing it over to the broker dealer, and then that's what we need to, to have a profitable situation for, for primary dealers to buy treasuries. Got it. So, so until that circle is broken, I think this is gonna force capital into US treasuries and it's gonna drown all other investments. Uh, now, are they gonna do everything they can to try to get retail to buy stocks all the way to the bottom? Certainly. Oh yeah, they do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, we haven't even barely started. We haven't even passed the bill that we're going to fund yet. So as soon as they pass the bill, um, then they can start. Uh, so yeah, so the, the auctions are going to get massively larger. So that's really the big risk in the short term for the treasury market is that the issuance is going to increase massively. Um, but you got to think about it. If, if we need to raise, if our deficit's going to go from a trillion a year to say three trillion, then the monthly deficit goes from 100 billion to say 300 billion. So maybe we have a three times increase in supply. Are we gonna have a three times increase in demand? I, I think we will, and that's gonna come at the cost of other assets. So could they allow this yield to go a little bit higher before they start to push it down? Maybe, but the Fed's already trying aggressively not to allow that to happen. And that's why they're uh, vacuuming up bonds right now uh, because the risk is 22 trillion dollars sitting in these treasuries gets upset and starts to liquidate so if, if these yields rise it's going to put pressure on every holder of u.s treasuries to sell and get out of the way uh, so that's why you're seeing the fed aggressively buy treasuries uh, right now uh let's see we have a question there the tips going to Excellent question too, and an and phenomenal answer, Jason. Yeah, no, it's a good question. So yeah, there's clearly a risk that if we increase the deficit three to five times, that we have a huge supply shock. Um, but I don't think the Fed's gonna allow the yields to rise much because that would cause uh, some 22 trillion outstanding to be uh, having pressure to sell. So we wanna incentivize buying and holding treasuries and allowing anyone who does need to get out to be able to get out through QE, which is uh, at the highest pace of, of all of history. Now, normally they don't pull the QE out until the end. So they make everybody buying the treasuries have, uh, they have to hold till the crisis has been resolved and then they pull out QE and let everybody out. Um, but because people are getting into margin calls and are forced to liquidate treasuries. They're having to do rate cuts and QE at the same time. That combination uh, is just absolutely insanely positive for bondholders. Because now we have primary dealers making money hand over fist to buy these treasuries, one. And then two, we have very little risk of a yield spike because the Fed's vacuuming up anybody who needs to exit their treasuries early. So really that's the best situation we could possibly have to be long treasuries. Um, so that's why I'm hesitant to get too, uh, too much risk exposure into the gold market at this point in time. Because again, we haven't even passed the bill. We haven't ramped up the issuance. We haven't gone and wrecked havoc all over the world to help force money into these markets. We haven't retaliated on China 
Uh, we haven't developed herd immunity and we're probably gonna have 10 times the deaths in 14 days. So bottom line is, I like our positioning exactly how we have it. I wouldn't change a single thing. Okay, we got a question. Is Tip going to fare well? Uh, you know, I'm not an expert at the Tip product. So I'm really, my specialty is really, uh, the reason I like this particular product, the third year, it's basically like having a 30 time leveraged one year bond. And you can see it has the most room to go down. So it's, it's an extremely leveraged product for playing uh, my prediction, which is yields go lower. Uh, now, again, if society globally decides to let this just rip through society, get it over with, then we get back to business much sooner and that shortens the timeline of everything. But if we go into this mode of trying to save lives, protect the healthcare system, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop the economy, then this could be dragged out for two years. Uh, so that, that's really the timing on when we wanna change our stances. Uh, government actions are critical right now. If they're gonna just force everybody back to work and let this rip through society, uh, this could be over with in six months. It's gonna be horrifying. Or do, you know, they, Hamza, do, you well? do they go pause, you know, on, off, on, off? Well, if they go on, off, on, off, we save lives, but it's ec economic destruction for the entire period. Uh, Mitch says, what happens to the option? I have a document I need to study on that. So I'll look at that. I and, hi highly doubt they'll close markets. And if they do for very short amounts of time. Yeah, exactly, guys. Uh, primary dealers are the big banks, Mark. So JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, there's like 20 of them. Great question too, Mark. I'm surprised that it's taken that so long for that question to come up. That was one of my first questions when uh, I looked at this system with Jason. There you go. Here's the uh, here's the companies that really control every government around the world. So forget about the theatrics. It doesn't matter if you have a Democrat or a Republican in the office. Maybe it's favoring different powers, but really these guys, uh, these guys really unfortunately have a um, huge, huge influence on policy. And this is by far the most critical one to follow JP Morgan. Um, as far as buying, uh, Murray said, when do we buy the bank? So the banks don't mind letting their shares crash because, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to buy the treasuries. They're going to sell them to the Fed who they control. And then they're going to buy back their own stock on pennies on the dollar. Uh, so it's a mistake to think that the banks actually want the stock market to not crash. Um, you know, that's the name of the game. Let it, don't let this crisis go uh, without their advantage. So, uh, so Jason, yes, sir. I have a question. So oil, oil's gone down and the, the uh, drillers and, and uh, such, they need to borrow money from the banks. The banks will loan them money based on their revenues for what is it? Three months prior six months prior so would they loan them money at that level or or would they loan them money based on uh today's level i don't know the answer to that question i'm afraid um because they lag they lag in 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 their valuation of the oil <laughs> Yeah, so this crash in oil is really what caused the uh, the whole thing to, to come apart. And, uh, you know, I think Russia did this by design. 
at the same time we had the stock market crashing. And so that just forced massive liquidations. Um, so yeah, how low will oil go? Uh, I think timing on this will be very similar to picking a bottom in equities. Um, but yeah, in our, in our pro membership, we're looking at US oil companies and US gas companies, which I think will be maybe pennies on the dollar, not quarters on the dollar. I think US equities in general, we're gonna pick up the ETFs I like for pr probably 25% of what they costed, what they were valued at just four weeks ago. So I think mm -hmm. the 75% decline in some of these really good companies we want, like the healthcare, biotech, medical device. Will e-commerce crash that much when they have good revenues? Maybe not next quarter, but what happens if they can't get the supplies they need because China is blocking supply chains? So that's why I'm not jumping on the e-commerce ETF yet. I got to see if my suspicion is correct and that China is really trying to punish the United States for all the tariffs and uh, pressure we put on them in the last. You got to realize the phase two trade deal was never going to happen. It was going to completely cripple China and their entire competitive advantage. And that competitive advantage, again, is to control their society, to tax their population at an extremely high rate, pay them an extremely low wage, and then to subsidize key industries of the future. So that's their whole, that's their whole strategy. And to try to take that away from them really means they'll never have a chance at becoming the dominant power. So I believe China realized that phase two was never on the table. Uh, and so they struck, they struck hard. So my expectation is that China will start to withhold supplies that are critical uh, and that they are ready to decouple with the United States. And if that happens, there's a lot of pain in equity markets ahead and potentially more shocks in the oil market. Um, so that's why we're just playing it safe. We got a lot of cash, we got a lot of dry powder. Um, we're ready to buy US companies when we think the peak panic has, has been reached, which I think we're uh, not even close to yet. And we're, we're understanding how the banking system works so that we can make the same moves that your banks are doing right now with you know, JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan's got a big book of bonds. They don't have a big book of equities. Uh, as far as loans, soil, that's not my specialty. So I'm afraid I can't uh, provide good insight to that. Um, now, I know Trump said we're going to fill up our oil reserve and buy oil from uh, from our companies here, but you know, how long will that last? Uh, bottom line is we can slow down for a few weeks, few months, and then America's bankrupt. So I think we're gonna try to say, oh, let's do lockdowns, let's do quarantines, let's set up all these, you know, call it ICU, I would probably call it a hospice. But then we have to get back to work. So that's really the, the key timing here is when can we get our economic output back to, you know, maybe not 100%. When can we get it back to 80%? What's it at right now? Maybe 20%? So as long as economic output slowed, we could really count on equities having pain and the bond market uh, having to raise capital to, to allow the government to try to keep different sectors on life support because it's just... It's too expensive for uh, private banks to, to solve this crisis. And think of the magnitude. You got a 50% crash from something like 300 billion in bad mortgage loans that were repackaged and turned into maybe 3 trillion in derivatives. What's the crash in global GDP just so far? 
it's just gigantic. I mean, just massive. So I highly, highly doubt that the bottom is in for stocks. And again, we haven't even passed the bill. We haven't auctioned any bonds. And the primary dealers haven't been rewarded for taking this risk. So, so we're not there yet. Jason, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Joe Campbell here. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. Uh, you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, I'm, I'm uh, kind of viewing you in between uh, working, and you mentioned a few minutes ago that there was an open uh, emerging markets trade uh, for the for the pro uh, folks. And um, I, I don't uh, have that trade, and I was curious what it was. Sure, let me pull it up. I wouldn't do it. Or it's still good to even consider it. Uh, I wouldn't do it today. Yeah, it's, I think it's up well over a thousand percent at this point. Yeah, thirteen hundred. Great, uh, great catch though, Joe. Did you say it's up thirteen hundred percent? Yeah. Well, that's not a good catch for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we did it on February twentieth. Yeah, I, I was I wasn't born into portfolio builders yet, so. <laughs> it's okay. You got you're getting some. Uh, some good puts and uh, yeah, there's so much up. The good news is this market condition is perfect for the way, you know, for, for the way I like to trade. So I think you guys are in pretty good hands right now. Um, now I thought we we're going to have conflict with China way back in July of last year and really didn't believe they would sign that trade deal. Cause I didn't think they're going to give up their competitive advantage. And so, um, so yeah, I think I think there's some fireworks ahead in terms of surprises that people aren't pricing in yet. Uh, but bottom line is, even if we went into a full lockdown today, I mean, like the kind China did, where if you leave your house, you're gonna go to jail for a year. Uh, North Korea, you you leave your house, you got photos of people getting hung. Uh, everyone's wearing a mask. So we're not even close to that. But if, if we had that tomorrow in America, we'd still quite likely, if the whole world did that tomorrow, tonight, 14 days from today, we would still have 150,000 deaths. Okay, so the lag effect based on when China did their hardcore quarantines, was about 60 days. It took them around 30 to 60 days to see the exponential growth flatten out and slow down. Uh, so, so yeah, we're not there yet. Uh, we still got parties in, in Florida, for heaven's sakes. We still got all these dumbass kids running around saying, you got to live life. So. Hey, Jason, Tony, quick question. What do you sure. want? What, what are we using our interactive brokers account for? Is it for shorting? That was uh, that's to short China's currency. So um, right now, I think China got us good. I hate to say it. I think China and Russia uh, and their allies, which I think they have plenty of allies here stateside. So think about who would be pro-China. Well, anybody who's outsourcing labor to China and has a globalized uh, industry, they don't really want to punish China now, do they? Because that's a huge, it's basically their partner in crime here. Um, so, so right now, I think China and the folks that like China here in the stateside uh, have the upper hand. They delivered a powerful blow and we're just starting to feel the repercussions so i think you'll see uh america has to take the blow recover and then strike back so that's what i see happening in, in the coming months ron wants to do a leap option on tesla uh a, a call option Hell no. 
No, I wouldn't buy a call option on um, any equities, except for maybe your gold idea, but I think you're still early on that one. Yeah, early, 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 uh, down the road. <laughs> yeah, Tesla's gonna, Tesla's so over leveraged, they're gonna crash massively. Uh, Frank says only a few states have actually shut down much other than entertainment. Yeah, we have much further to go uh, down on output before that bottoms. That's correct. Yep. And uh, Jason, just while we're on that, uh, I actually just got a text from my buddy uh, in the telecom industry that uh, works on uh, providing uh, fiber to the cell phone towers. And uh, they they just got passes to drive on the road. So it looks like the lockdown's going to hit our state uh, probably today or Sometimes yeah, we... I've been having doctors send me rumors that the real USA full lockdowns getting ready. Uh, that they're you know they're setting up uh, military all over. Uh, New Mexico, David. Yeah, uh, I just thought I would uh, touch on that just while while uh, while everyone is asking about it. Joe Campbell here again. Can I get one more question for this session? As many questions as you like, my friend. <laughs> well, uh, I can only ask questions up to my level of intelligence, which right now is very low. <laughs> uh, so uh, the question is about uh, the template. As so I'm going through the boot camp uh, uh, webinars, and uh, the last one of those is uh, in regard to the template. And uh, one of the first webinars that I sat through uh, with you guys live, it, um, there was a, a mention of the template being uh, worked on or reconstructed or something of that nature. I don't remember exactly what it was. So my question is, uh, is the current working template available for use now, or is that still a work in progress somehow? Yeah, you're... Uh... Your template, or what I like to call the platform, the portfolio builder platform. Yes. Uh, that video does spend about 30 minutes just teaching you how to find your spreadsheet and access uh -huh. it. So you definitely have it. Um, and the template's good, but I'm going to get you a new template this Thursday, which is optimized okay. with all the new ETFs. So okay. I would watch that video. Uh, and uh, practice finding your, your, your platform and even practice putting some trades in it. And then on Thursday, when you get your new sheet, it's really easy to copy paste the trades over and then, and then rotate into the update. So from time to time, I will change uh, what I call the palette. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I follow that. Okay, great. Good. Uh, oh, okay. Great I appreciate it. So the, the palette used to have all these just global ETFs, but now, you know, who would have guessed what happened in 2020 would have happened? Not, not me, not, not last year. Uh, right. Ne neither did any of my fang stocks. <laughs> <laughs> my, I got fanged by the fang stocks. <laughs> so, but anyway, we'll live through that. <laughs> and the, We'll have smooth sailing ahead, or at least happy trails or something like that. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, fellas, I appreciate your time. I got to run for now, but I'll uh, tune in tomorrow. Same time, same bet channel. <laughs> okay, so Tuesday is just a written update, um, and Wednesday we're back live. Tuesday's my, All right. big, my big uh, work day. All right, Wednesday it is. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thank you, Joe. Appreciate Great it. Great questions, bud. Bye. Uh, Randy says, should I do a trade alert that you didn't in, uh, send out? No, don't do trade alerts that I don't send out. Yeah, guys, so that's a common question. A lot of people say, hey, should I do this or that or this or that? If, if I thought you should do that, I would have already uh, issued that. Um, so yeah, we're holding most of these TLT calls. So if it's an out-of-the-money option, 
we're really wanting it to go into the money and have a lot of time premium. If it's a at the money option, then I'm, which is what most of our TLT calls are or were, then we really want to hang on to it until we're well in the money. So we'll, we'll likely sell that one on Thursday and replace it with a new one and do that every Thursday. Hey, and uh, just real quick, Jason. Um, hey, Mark, uh, I saw your question you typed in in the inbox. Uh, Mark, can you let me know your last name, bud? I, I know we have a handful of Marks, but he said, uh, hey, Dean, can you give me the means, uh, the way to get into the boot camp? Yeah, happy to, Mark. I just need to know your, your last name. Uh, I'll get it for you, Dino. I'm getting oh, okay, an cool. example right now. Sweet. Okay, cool. Yeah, Mark, I'll uh, I'll call you so we can do the boot camp upgrade uh, when I get off a string of uh, book calls today, okay? Hey, Jason, I have a question about um, what do you think the possibility of the broker-dealers going belly up, such as TD Ameritrade or UBS or some of the, you know, the big brokerage houses? Um. They're making more money than ever right now. <laughs> High volatility is more volume for them and typically, uh, you know, better, better for them. Yeah. I don't think the broker dealers at risk. So they have a huge bond position, which is pretty much guaranteed. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the real question is could Ray Dalio and different hedge funds go belly up and cause pain? Certainly. Which is why I have that put on the TLT just as a fail safe. Anwar says, uh, so every Tuesday, Thursday, Anwar, you get your boot camp content. Um, and you definitely get that. So every Tuesday, Thursday, and it has links to all the educational content. Uh, Mark says, what do we do if some of our TLTs are over 100% return? Then you uh, wait for the trade alert. Uh, but yeah, Anwar, definitely look on the last several Tuesday, Thursdays. And so uh, some people got the TLT trades at a discount compared to my portfolio and they're just cleaning up. So good for you. Uh, but that, that doesn't change timing for me. And time's on our side with the TLT. The longer we hold, the more profitable I believe they will be over the course of time. Okay. Uh, Michael Seebeck, go ahead. All right. Um, I'm in a bit of a quandary. Um, so not that I'm pulling cash out of my account, but I'm in a situation where we're so locked down and um, business has just come to a standstill that being commission-based uh, as I am, I won't be seeing good checks or any checks for the foreseeable future. So I, I have an exciting news is I've just about paid for my subscription based on TLT calls, which is exciting. Um, but nice, I'm, Mike. yeah, but I'm looking at uh, possibly uh, an income play here just to keep cash flowing. And so um, the other day when, you know, TLT dropped to 139, I, I did buy some of that up and was able to really cash in. But uh, where I guess I'm leading this, this uh, uh, statement to is I'm, um, I'm not fully able to follow the program, you know, in terms of the puts. Um, and then on the other side is, is trying to generate some cash, perhaps about four grand a month. It's not a lot, but it, it solves a lot of ills. So I'm not looking for advice, just- I'm gonna um, give you some confidence to hold your TLT to Thursday. I, I, I get what you're, you're asking in between the lines here. Um, okay. So let me show you, and they've only, Pledge this for the week. Let me, I'm trying to find the exact article. Uh, yeah, and TLT's uh, 165.19. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, 160. Yeah, it's pumping. We'll see. I, I posted the link in our private chat. Let me grab it. So here's what the Fed's doing this week that's good for TLT. Uh, so Michael's saying, hey, I've got some gains. I can't risk to lose those gains. We saw that spike on the TLT to 180 and people missed out. Yep. So I get I get the concern in the question. Let me just post one thing that I think will um, give you some confidence in terms of timing. So, you know, McConnell's stimulus plan, I don't know how the market will react to that. Uh, that's something that could create some short-term volatility for you to be concerned about for sure. Um, let me just find this one article. Where the hell did it go? Well, if I can add something on that, last night, after that was announced and it started hitting the different media, social media platforms, the futures market, it it dropped below the 5% to limit down, plunge that, went, caused the market to go into, um, you know, shut down, the trigger flipped. And it, it stayed there at around 2174 for a good while. And I was just thinking to myself, oh my God, you guys are cashing in for, for it to drop, you know, 10 points on the spy, a hundred points in the, in the futures. But then in the morning it, it bounced way up and then- It was the uh, Fed's announcement that gave the market a little hope because they're gonna buy the yeah. uh, corporate bonds is what okay. the market a little bit. Oh, here we go. Okay, here was the Federal, Rele uh, Federal Re Reserve's announcement this morning that got us from lock limit down to not um, blah, 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 we're gonna, you know, we're buying, so they've set up basically a repo for, well, they're, they're actually buying the corporate bond ETF, which helps the, the corporate bond market. Um, mm -hmm. Here's the best news for treasury holders, which keeps getting better every week. To support the critical market functioning, the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, will purchase treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities in amounts needed to support smooth market functioning and effective transmission of monetary policy to broader financial conditions and the economy. The FOMC had previously announced it would purchase at least 500 billion of treasury securities and at least 200 billion of mortgage-backed securities. Um, so they ramp this up significantly through this week. I'm trying to see the exact line, but that's why TLT is going up today. They increase the, I think it was 40 billion a day. Now it's 125 billion a day mm. through the week. Okay. But I will say this, if you have bills to meet in this given month and you have a substantial profit i would take profits and secure your overhead yeah it makes sense okay so mm -hmm. and i said the same thing when the tlt was at 180 mm -hmm. and i said hey guys i think it could go higher i think the stock's going to keep crashing but if you have bills you need to meet take the profits we have a lot of different positions that have more time premium. So sell your shorter duration and let the longer duration do its job. Uh, Cause there's a lot of unknowns always. There's always unknowns. It's not, a, you know, even though I think in the long term, my prediction in the, is that this yield goes way lower. In the short term, we have a lot of crazy things going on. We have margin calls, we have three times a deficit coming through. Are they gonna reprice where they start yields at? They could. We have the stimulus plan that they may try to trick every mom and pop that, hey, this 
McConnell's stimulus plan is going to save the stock market, guys. How hard is it for the, the big banks to take some profit on treasuries and buy the stocks for a few days and then go tell CNBC to pump the stock market mm -hmm. so insiders could sell? So there's a lot of short-term noise that we have to overlook. So, so yeah, I'd say in general, if you're going for income for costs that you have to meet today. Now, first of all, I would call up every person I owe money to and tell them that I need to defer payments. Probably Friday, it would be enough time for this, all these laws to trickle through. Mm -hmm. But you should be able to defer every single payment from your car insurance to your credit card payments, to your mortgage, to your car loan. All of this should be deferred. Okay. And every month you should call in and get it deferred another month uh, because all the legislation is being passed to, uh, to allow them to defer the payment themselves. So that's number one recommendation that will immediately Jason, help. Do you think they'll do that without an adverse credit report? I don't know. It would be unfair if they did. It's yeah, yeah it's, it would defeat the purpose of what the president's asking for. <laughs> yeah. I would I would wait till Thursday or Friday so that enough, you know, all so that the word can seep through the, the powers that be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I try to go defer every payment I had. And I told all my family members to do the same. So that's one. And, and even Geico just emailed me saying, hey, if you can't make your car insurance, don't worry, we're not going to cancel your policy. Yeah. So um, I think if you just straight up even just didn't pay it, very little bad would happen. But if you call up and ask that they're going to happily give you a deferment and that you could do that for at least the next 60 days. So that'll help alleviate your short term uh, overhead costs. Okay, but still, uh, if you have obligations and this is your source of income, take some profits and focus on the uh, shortest duration. That way your longer term bets can still pay off and realize, yeah, there's a lot of things that can create short term volatility. I mean, look at, look at the confidence I had to have in this prediction to keep us, did I budge at all? in the face of the TLT going, what's the lowest we saw a TLT go? 139. One, okay, did you guys see me change my outlook even slightly? No, not, not, a, not a hesitant, not a, a quiver in your voice. Right, and how hard was that? That was hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's gonna be plenty of volatility, plenty of noise, plenty of people going into bankruptcy now, is the Fed taking actions that make me more and more confident by the day? They are. Are there risks? Sure, there's always short-term risks to our positions. Um, and we'll, it's much easier to predict a year out than it, or six months to a year out than it is uh, one week out. So currently, I'm not holding any TLT calls. I've sold them all at a, a really good profit. Okay. And I feel good about that. However, you know, we're, it's, it's, it's not a, on one hand, you could say, well, I'm missing a little bit of the upside right now as it continues to go north. But hey, I've, I've, I've banked, I've banked profit. Um, and so like, while I'm not in a, I'm not in a cash crunch. I've, I've probably got three months worth of cash to, to pay everything. So I'm okay, but I want to, I would like to see uh, four or $5,000 a month in profits come from trading. Cause I would really like to retire from what I do and do this for myself. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is that so in terms of generating short-term cash, that might be something you might need to think about. What would you recommend? Or not recommend, but th you know, what thoughts do you have? Well, I always say that uh, if you try to force profits mm -hmm. 
takes you down the wrong strategy and the right, wrong mindset. Yeah. What I like to do is where do I think I can generate a profit and then focus my energy on, on that? Where do I think there's a, a high reward with a low risk? So, and again, like I said, predicting what's going to happen over the course of time is a lot easier than trying to predict what's going to happen. Uh, it's kind of like physics. We're pretty good at predicting, uh, you know, if we hit a baseball, it's, it's going to react this way, but we're not very good at uh, quantum physics, for example. So we're, we're pretty good at predicting that the, you know, how long it'll take for the earth to spin around the sun, or mm -hmm. if I drop a baseball, how long it'll take to hit the bottom. Uh, but we go to the quantum physics level and our, all the science goes right out the window because there's chaos, there's unpredictability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not gonna try to change what I'm doing to try to force profits in the short term because I don't believe it's possible. So, so you'll see the way I'm gonna design our system is uh, to, to look at what I think is a high reward, low risk opportunity Mm -hmm. that I think over the course of time will, will generate profit. And I'm on board with that. I, that's part of the reason uh, for my um, willingness to pay for the subscription and be involved because I like the long-term approach as well. I just need to mirror that or marry that with possible short-term gains. And I really like these TLTs. I mean, What's a good folklore? You know, we, you know, when, uh, when you get a lot of profit, save it. I, I think we need to go into a period of time where we conserve capital. Yeah. And then we don't get greedy and try to force trades. Yeah. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's a, a solution to say, Hey, we're going to get a guaranteed. No, four, there's 4 not. percent a month. Yeah. And if you, try, not. if you try to do that, you're going to end up losing 4% a month. Yep. So my wait, so, wait so for my, the tr Go ahead. my advice to you is uh, call up every creditor, defer your payments. Number one, number two, if there's costs that you need, take some profits. And then number three, realize I'm going to place the best trade that I believe we can possibly make mm -hmm. at all times, and it's going to be regardless of whether it's going to make money this month or next month. It's going to be what's the best decision that we could possibly make for our entire group at this point in time. Okay. I appreciate you engaging in that conversation. Appreciate it. No, I think that's the same thing everybody's saying. So uh, very good. Good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome, Michael. Great questions. Thanks, Dean. My pleasure, bud. Okay. Uh, and then Jason, I think you had a couple more come through the chat box here. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to stop. If if I don't sell a trade, then I don't think you should sell a trade. That's going to be pretty much a, a pretty repetitive question for people asking if they should um, do random trades that I haven't issued. Uh, Jim says, nice thing about the Roth IRA account is these short-term trades are tax advantage. Very good point, Jim. Uh, Frank says car insurance has a huge boon, regardless of nobody driving around. <laughs> Good point. Frank, what's your last name? You've had some fantastic commentary in the chat box there today. <laughs> uh, Mark says they're sending out unsolicited notices offering to defer Geico, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Yeah. Yeah, I guarantee you guys, you can get every bill you have deferred. Uh, maybe even phone. I would call every single person that you owe uh, any kind of subscription cost to and ask me if you can defer that payment. And um, I think you'll have pretty good success with that. Uh, DD is up 300% on her TLT. Can that get better? It could. If you have bills you have to pay, take some profits. If you wanna follow my trades, I'm holding till Thursday. And then I'll be selling that same position. Randy says, what happens when our option expires in the money? 
Cha-ching. Uh, so yeah, we'll sell them all before expiration regardless, Randy. Yeah. Uh, Tony says, I've made a mistake about 10 contracts of the March 19, 180 put. I bought another 10. Should I sell the excess 18? Uh, yeah, so Tony, I, if, I, if you accidentally make a mistake, then uh, I would fix the mistake as soon as you cut. Now, some people like Mark Stoley, for example, they understand the risk I'm taking and they understand that I'm trying to design this to be a low volatility strategy. So he actually will say, okay, well, Jason's willing to take this much risk, but he's a little bit boring. I'm willing to take on maybe 25 to 75% more risk than he is. So he's making a calculated decision to take on more risk than I do, especially when his analysis leads to the same conclusion I've made. So I don't mind if people uh, have made a calculated decision to take more risk and they want that risk and they understand how to manage that on their own. I have no problem with that. And I wouldn't scorn you for doing that. But if you've made a mistake and then you realize it, uh, then most likely you're gonna to wanna to correct that mistake as soon as possible and, and then just get back to following uh, the recommended. Yeah, and Jason, Tony just posted, he fixed the mistake and made $600 in the process. Oh, good for you. Very good. Um, Mark says, do we still hold the calls? Yeah, so we have a tiny risk in GLD calls for April. I did put out a update to my bootcamp members after I had done those GLD calls saying that, you know, normally if there's QE, I want to be long gold products. Um, but after really evaluating it, and this is when the TLT was at 180, so we didn't have a good opportunity to, um, to go along the TLT. It seemed overpriced, even though I held. Um, so that's when we put out a few short-term trades on the GLD. But that's because I thought the bond rally was done, and I didn't realize, oh my gosh, this is going to take two years at least to dig ourselves out of the hole that we're in. And this could drown out all other asset classes for the entire period. So I haven't sold my GLT, GLD calls yet. And uh, quite likely I will slowly tiptoe into the gold and silver market with options. But I think instead of short-term options, you'll see that I'm more inclined to do an out of the money leap into those assets uh, versus the in the money short term, which are the two that we have. So I'll hold those likely close to expiration. And then future trades, which are only for pro for the precious metals, I would expect to see that I'm more inclined to do uh, two year leaps that are out of the money versus what I did previously. Uh, yeah, Mike wants the Federal Reserve announcement. So press release, they have press releases. Um, so the Fed's basically told the market that they're gonna do everything they can, not everything they can, they're going to do everything necessary to protect the U.S. bond market during this period of time. Uh, and that's because it's, it's at the interest of the, the people who control it, which is J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs. Uh, so the last thing they're going to do is punish uh, the owners of the Federal Reserve. Now, again, that doesn't mean they might be willing to reprice the yields at the time before this auctions start to massively grow, but they may not because, you know, what's the pro, what's the pros and cons of allowing the yields to rise before, uh, before the issuances, before the deficit goes from a trillion a year to like three, four, you know, what's the deficit going to be 
this calendar year is going to be three trillion, four trillion. I don't know. It's going to be a lot. Um, so the pros would be if they did allow the yields to slip for a little bit, that there'd be more room for the primary dealers to benefit from buying and holding these treasuries for a longer period of time without us having to, to chart into negative yields. Okay, what's the con? Well, the con is if these yields start to slip, there's some 22 trillion outstanding in this market that's gonna be losing bond value and wondering why they maybe bought such a low yielding treasury. So they might wanna sell and try to buy at a higher yield. So I think the, the bond market and, and so what's the Fed's actions, you know, what's their actions? Well, they cut rates to zero. So that's, that's that sweetheart deal for banks, borrow at zero, buy a positive yielding treasury, and then get cash on top of that while the Fed holds your, your bond. I mean, it's a crime. It's, it's really free money for banks. Um, so I'm skeptical that we'll see much volatility in treasuries at these levels. Now, do I think we're gonna see profit taking next time we get to that 180 level? Yeah, I think, you know, good old, the dog's been trained to take profits now. Who missed out on that 180 TLT? Just about everybody except Mark Stoley did in our audience. Uh, so I think we'll wanna take some profits before we get to that level. But I think in the grand scheme, we'll go much lower than that. The other thing to keep in mind is what are other central banks doing? They're probably gonna to go to negative territory. So I'd suspect we see the front end of this curve go negative and that this 30 year could get to no less than half, half a basis point. Uh, Mark, Michael uh, sold some on the paper account. Yeah, that was, that was the biggest jump in TLTs in a single day in history. And uh, I was foolish not to take profits. So. Do you have a question, Kathy? Uh, Kathy Sorry, it took, me, it took me a while to unmute. There you I, can't there you are. I can't remember the name of the other person, but prior to miraculously finding you guys earlier this year, um, for the last 10 years, I've been selling calls. And when I started doing it, the volatility was crazy high and I was making good money on calls. The point to this is the last three years, I maybe got a fourth of what I used to get. So I'm not counting on the really sweet call income that you can get today any further out than this thing ends. So I made a decision to retire based on the volatility and the call income back then. And it got a little tight the last few years. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Just well, kind of, just, just because you see it today doesn't mean it'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, well, see, the risk on selling the calls is if we get some sort of market manipulation and the SPY jumps 10%, that'll be hold, hard to hold on to. Yeah, the, yeah, it's, you think you're selling it far out where you get more money than what it costs you, and then you watch it go flying by you and you're kicking yourself in the behind. Yeah, yeah so that... Um, Fundamentally, I like that, but the, the risk management on that would be really hard for a, a group like ours. It, it, it takes a lot more time and it, you don't sleep as well. And I much prefer this new method that I've found through you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, the way we're doing it, uh, you know, same idea, just uh, different risk management, I would, I would say. So Good, great, great comment. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, I think we pretty much worked through the, all those questions, right, Jason? Oh, let's tell people about our options. I always forget to. Okay, and uh, just real quick, Calvin, did you have a question too? I saw your microphone was unmuted, bud. 
Hey, Marty, I see your microphone's unmuted, and Oscar, how can we help you guys? Yeah, how you guys doing? This is Marty. Hey, hey Marty. Marty. Hey, uh, I'm new to this, uh, I'll call it a channel, I guess. Anyway, uh, I've been an option trader for many years, and I've been uh, successful with uh, debit spreads. I like doing those because I limit my risk and I definitely don't like uh, selling calls and then have it run by me like that lady was talking about. I've experienced that. That is no fun. <clears throat> so yeah. I find, I find the debit spreads to be manageable uh, what I put in the trade, but the caveat is, is you need a volatile market or at least get your direction right. And so you're changing your trades according to the market at least that's how i do it and you were going to mention options so my ears perked up you guys have apparently some kind of program yeah so we have uh really four products our buy and hold portfolio uses no options and has actually done really well it's uh, it's actually outperformed all the other portfolios but more volatility. So really people uh, who follow our more advanced programs are interested in less risk and safer returns. Um, so that's good for accounts under 30,000. Most of our trades revolve on protecting an underlying asset. Um, we're not doing debit or credit spreads whatsoever. Uh, I prefer to generate the return with the underlying asset in most cases and then use option market to hedge. Or to are you are you are you talking covered calls? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, well, I'll t let me show you how we're positioned currently. Um, how much capital are you trying to to uh, to manage? Uh, under more, 100. more under a hundred? Okay. Yeah. Under fifty, or right around a hundred? Uh, no, above between the two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't put it all in the market. I've been doing this a long time and I prefer to have less in. Uh, I'm always uh, very, very cognitive of how much I've, exposure I have. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so our, our best program that I recommend is our pro system. It puts half your cash in the bond market, half your cash in the equity market, and has a uh, little exposure to precious metals or commodities and a uh, little exposure to emerging markets. And the biggest selling point to this portfolio is not the 8% return in 2020, not the 14.8 in 2019. The biggest selling point is actually, funny enough, the 1% loss in July. The only loss we have had this entire time is negative 1%. So that's why big investors with a lot of capital really find our Well, you're, you're diversified, right? Exactly. I, mean, yeah. I don't know anything about it, but I, from what you explained to me, I, I, first thing that comes to mind is diversification. Yeah, so and... we make it very hard to lose uh, capital is really the, uh, the key to that. Well, Sometimes what I'll do on a debit spread is I'll go ahead. Let's say I'm doing a put debit. I'll go ahead and buy a call. Uh, so I'll put my debit out, say, six weeks, and then I'll buy a call two weeks out. And as that, if the call comes into play, uh, as far as gets profitable because I was wrong, then I'll sell it. And then I'll just wait for the market to turn around and I'll get out of my other position. And I've been quite successful. I use it as an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, that's not something you guys do, I, I don't imagine. No, yeah. So so our clients are more interested in putting the whole the whole investment, you know, every penny to work and trying to generate low volatility return. Um, yeah, that's not me. I don't trust the market mm. and I, I, I have some problems with uh, the bonds, uh, although, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking catastrophic failure. 
So not likely, of course, especially in the bonds for many reasons. But th there is, there is, you know, they're paying what a zero yield or point what two five. I mean, they're no. And we had the in inverted yield curve in the what is there three inverted yield curves in the last six months? Am I right about that? Yeah, the yield curve has inverted. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, you sound uh, more like a day trader, so that's definitely not the right uh, fit for. Oh me. no, I I definitely don't day trade. Okay. No, I'm I'm more like a uh, no no I don't do that no you can forget that that is a no place to be I tried it a little bit didn't like it my my trading's in between you guys are what I would say long term and I'm like six or eight weeks out and so I don't day trade and I and I and I work towards I work towards uh, my position is based upon what I believe. The market will go, so I'm 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 going. What's your with return the for direction. this year, Marty? That's uh, I think it's probably a more helpful question. What's it's your okay. return for the year? It's okay. Let's uh, let's <laughs> yeah. let's mute Marty. If you guys have a question, I'm happy to answer it. Um, I'm not interested in other people's strategies. Uh, okay, so yeah, Marty, if you do have a question and want to ask, please feel free to uh, to ask. Um, but yeah, I don't want to discuss uh, other people's trading strategies today yeah our time's too valuable if you do have a question uh tony l hey yeah uh, um you know we've had a little bit of success here you know uh i stumbled stumped my toe back there when that thing when the tlt gapped up by buying back in it just looks like it's going to come back close enough it's going to uh with the other options it's going to be okay my question now is if i decide to scale in is there a a particular avenue that you would scale in or would you just do it like on each call as a um, in other words if i were going to add 30 percent to my risk you know or to my account would you do that on a, as the new trades come across or would you balance the thing in the whole portfolio at once yeah so we have a pretty simple strategy currently um so per seventy-five thousand dollars, i would build this i don't think time's on your side this is gonna be critical for us to buy stocks. So we, we really wanna get this built. That's gonna be the foundation of our portfolio. So it's 100% it's critical that we own these puts. Okay, this is giving us the downside protection for the next 18 months. And that's gonna give us the, again, the confidence and the, the hedge to be able to go full into US equities during a period where I think they're gonna be falling like a rock in the ocean. Uh, so I'd get that built as soon as possible. I don't think time's on your side. Uh, the TLT, also I don't think time's on your side. So I'd have 40% allocated to TLT. Uh, I think you know the, the recommendation, right? So 10%, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you know what to do. Yeah, I'm just curious if there was a key that you would say like, in other words, if I went to, you know, double the size of my portfolio or one and a half size or should I just go ahead and do I just jump entire... right I would just jump right in yeah I don't think time's on your side and here's why uh, this is not like it's a slowly unfolding crisis uh, this is a quickly unfolding crisis so 14 days ago this had uh, just delete it's really easy guys uh, you just delete a digit so in 10 in 14 days this will quite likely be 150,000. So that's very bullish for our strategy. Hmm. <clears throat> well, scary. So and Tony, were you at 300? Yeah. Okay. But I've got some sitting on the side now, <clears throat> considering <laughs> sure. moving that up some. It's everyone does it in time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't see time being on your side, unfortunately. If, I, if exactly, you want to do Jason. anything, Tony, wait for uh, the only, here's the only things that might be worth considering is the stimulus bill getting passed. I don't know what the short-term reaction to that might be. Um, but it, just in general, the, what has to happen is U.S. has to start locking down and shutting off its economy. 
otherwise we're going to have chaos, complete chaos. And we're not prepared for it yet. So uh, my recommendation is, um, you know, we have a put on the TLT. It's way down at 145. You can buy that for 220 today. So that'd give you some downside protection on that. Uh, GDX, we're doing the married put. So you're going to have limited risk the second you get in that one. Uh, if you really want to limit your risk on that TLT, then just move up the strike on your put to have confidence to buy that. So the married put's a good way to reduce uh, that uneasy feeling in your stomach. Hey, when Jason. You... Yes, sir. You said GDX. We have a put. I don't have a put for that. Okay. Yep, we oh. did the married put on that. Um, What's that? Uh, Before you started, Tony. Was that uh, before I started? I got you. But we yeah. did go over it in detail last Thursday. Um, yeah, that was five contracts of the 64 day um, 23 put, the 23 strike. Yep. And we're, wow, we're right back to 2270. So, yep, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Do you suggest I do that? I can't tell you what you should do, but that's what I, I did and still endorse. All right. Uh, so what's the, you know, what's the, the married put lock, if you do a at the money put option at the same time as buying the underlying, you're locking in the maximum loss at that point in time. And now your hope is that GDX goes up more than the cost of your downside protection. So we bought it, the GDX just tanked all the way down to what, 19? And now it's up 10% today. What a wild ride. So we're right back to where we started at. And um, I'm tempted to sell that put, to be honest. But I haven't done it yet. And so I have two months of protection on that position. I'll probably just let it ride. I mean, why take the risk? Why not sell a short against that put? You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Mine's up. <laughs> yeah, the puts up even though it's just uh cuz of the volatility, yeah. 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 So yeah, there's a million ways to skin a cat. I I think the way we're positioned is perfect. Um so we have a out of the money put at this point protecting the TLT. The Fed's taking the actions to build confidence in the treasury market. Went from 40 billion a day in purchases to 125 billion. Uh, we've seen some blowouts already in Curry, so I think a lot of the volatility on the TLT is behind us. Um, what's the big risk for the TLT? Tripling the deficit. That's a risk. That's all a huge supply shock. Uh, we got this stimulus plan that they may try to pump the markets with, so that could be some short-term noise. Um, but until we finish funding the government's stimulus, I'm not going to change my course. That's really what it boils down to. And I think it'll take them no less than a year to, to raise the capital they need to fund these different plans and probably more like two years. I mean, we could stop, the, let's just say the virus disappeared tomorrow. It would still probably take them two years to, to fund all this stuff they're passing. As long as the government has to pull resources out of a limited economy, there's going to be pain in other assets. It's just really that simple. You can't have every asset go up at once. It's not a video game where we could punch in a cheat code um, and just give everybody free resources. So economic output has reduced, not increased. Government spending is going up, not down. Okay, so once you get that through your head, you realize other assets are in trouble. And those assets are probably stock market number one. Uh, but now, and my expert, I don't trade the real estate market, but a lot of real estate moguls are starting to get freaked out about real estate prices crashing now. Uh, so I think every asset class is in some pretty serious pain, including, unfortunately, in the short, short, short order, uh, there's high risk for gold and crypto markets to have some pretty severe pain. I mean, 
how hard is it for a central bank to go punish everybody trying to pile into precious metal? What, let me ask you this. What good does it do the U.S. economy or the U.S. banking system if uh, retail investors are piling into cryptocurrencies and gold? Is that going to help us fund this problem? Not at all. That's a totally greedy play that only the central banks want to benefit from. Uh, so what would they do? Sell gold. Scare off all the retail and buy it right back for cheap. What could they do to crypt? I mean, if they can crush the gold market, you better believe they could crush, the, at least in a short order, the cryptocurrency market. Now, do I think gold, Bitcoin, silver, Ethereum are going to go astronomically higher in the course of time? Yes. But do I think that the powers that be could make it very difficult to stomach buying and holding those assets right now before they funded the bond market? I think they sure could. Easily. I mean, super easily. Ed, uh, you have a question, Yulet? Oh, yeah, I was just wondering, is it too late? Like, I was just wondering, can you buy uh, the June 19, 190 TLT calls? Yeah, all the TLT trades are still good to go. No, that wasn't yours. <laughs> I just went more out of the money, I think. Or I can't remember. If you oh, okay, I'm not going to give uh, opinions on trades I haven't endorsed. Um, no, no, I'm just wondering. You, oh, so you're not going to, okay. Yeah, because then we get every Tom, Dick, and Harry throwing random trades out. Um, but yeah, I, I think oh, yeah. the tr trades I've given you guys are well thought out. Uh, yeah. They have the right risk at the right duration. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason to um, to make your, you know, there's no reason for you to try to, you know, reinvent the wheel here. But in general, I think the longer you are long the TLT, the more money you're going to make. In the short term, I think there's plenty of volatility due to, uh, number one, the insiders want to sell stocks. There's no way they can sell all their stocks. So they're going to use every piece of news they can and the media. Hey, Larry, did you have a question? Oh, no, sir. Okay. Yeah, so I think you're going to see that the stock market's going to have plenty of pops that are used for insiders to sell and get out. And that, you know, who are these insiders? These are the guys who own these big corporations and the elite of the banking system. There's, they can never sell all their stock. There's not enough money in all of China to, uh, to sell it all. You know, think about the Fed's balance sheet's four and a half trillion. The value of the stock market's 32 trillion, or it was. Now it's what, 24 trillion. So there's just not enough dollars to even buy 10% of the stock market at that valuation. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to sell as much as they can at as high a price as they can. They're all going to buy bonds because they know it's the bank's going to be paid handsomely to invest in the government. And then they're going to let the stock market tank and buy it up for cheap. And they're going to use the media to trick everybody they can to buy stocks all the way to the bottom. You know, when's the CNBC going to tell you how the primary dealers get the sweetheart deal to buy bonds? I, I've never heard them explain <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, you know my favorite one recently was Kramer telling the people to buy, uh, start legging into Tesla stock at uh, seven eighty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at Warren Buffett came on and told us to hold at the top. He did that in the two two thousand eight crisis too. So yeah, we have limited economy, limited resources. There's no cheat code. So output has been reduced. I think we can all agree on that. Government spending is going up. Tax receipts are going down. So 
there has to be pain somewhere. The pain's going to be in every asset class except for bonds, most likely in the short term. What assets the most exposed? The U.S. stock market. They can pull the most resources out of that. Uh, now, QE is the reason to buy gold and Bitcoin, but it's easily, easily manipulated in the short term. Uh, so although I think those will go up over the course of time, I'd expect the risk of extreme volatility. So those are assets I would love to potentially pick up on any kind of dramatic sell-off. Uh, now, are we at the bottom of those? I don't know. If there's big sell-off in Bitcoin, Ethereum, silver, or gold, the right exposure is 10% max. And I'm doing that with a married put. So my real exposure to the gold market in two months is 1.2%. I can't lose more than that. So I put 10% into GDX, but then I put a put option that reduce my risk to 1.2%. So my exposure to precious metals for the next 60 days is no more than a 1.2% loss in my total account. Very nice, Jason. Um, hey guys, just a couple, uh, let's see here, a couple more questions. Uh, Cole E says, I have a question. Are you still planning to take profit above 175? Uh, should we expect an alert for this? And where do you expect the TLT can actually rise uh, this summer in this bond buying phase? Great question. Uh, yeah, so I think if we, you know, think of like the Pavlov, the dog's been trained to, to pull profits as we get to this yield right here. Let me show you. I think the world was conditioned to take some profits at this level. So this is that 0.99 in the third year. That's when we saw it hit 180. So I, I would be tempted to take some profits as we approach that level and then jump right back in uh, on any kind of pullback. I probably won't reduce all exposure because we might just blow right through that. Now, if I think of this pragmatically as a government, trying to raise trillions of dollars. Uh, first, I got to ask, how long do I need to increase the deficit for? By my, just looking at the stimulus plans already passing, this is a two year, two years they need to raise capital. So I think you'll see the treasury uh, and the Fed and the primary dealers are not incentivized to allow that yield to to drop too quickly. So I think it's gonna be a, I think you're gonna see stocks crash ferociously with some pretty impressive bounces, which the media will use to, to try to trick you into buying each bounce with each piece of news they can uh, create a story around. So I think we could get a vicious drop in stocks that goes beyond 50% where the, I think you're gonna see every Tom, Dick and Harry telling you to buy at a 50%. Um, and that they have to, the TLT will probably be a slow grind up and the stock market will probably be a quick, ferocious drop down with some very impressive bounces. That's what I expect. Uh, and with the, the supply side of the treasury market at least tripling, it'll make it easy for them to slowly grind that TLT. Uh, as far as how high can it go? Well, 180 was when we got to 0.9. You know, what's the lowest? I think the 30 year, depending on how bad this gets, would not go below zero. I think that would probably be when I got pretty scared. And so if we got to zero on the 30 year, then I would expect the German 30 year to be well below negative one, maybe close to negative two. So the German 30 year got as low as 0.5, uh, as I recall. So we can get a good sense for how low the U.S. Treasury will allow our yields to go based on what all the smaller central banks are doing. Um, so that'll be our best leading indicator as to, to how low we can go. In the short term, I do suspect that at a minimum, we'll get back to 
the 1% 30 year. Very nice, Jason. Um, let's see here. Mark said, uh, if we have those puts from previous trades, do we add more today? Uh, I'm not too sure what he's referring to. Maybe uh, GDX. No, this uh, is step uh, one this... of the instructions. Yeah. Yeah. So this was if you missed Friday's trade. We don't need more than 10% of our total capital in these puts. So what's the biggest risk of these puts? Uh, well, if the Fed were to nationalize the U.S. stock market, which I don't think they're going to do, they've you know they've been buying everything else, but that could potentially change the game a little bit. Uh, but it, it would ruin the dollar because it would cost so much money. Okay. So if I saw the Fed buying up U.S. stocks. Um, I would start to get more aggressive on the gold play sooner. But I don't think they're going to do that. They want to let stocks crash, pump money in the bond market, and then buy stocks cheap. That's what banks like to do. Very nice. OK, hey, Jason, uh, next question from Jim Wills. And uh, sorry, guys, I have uh, calls I got to get on. So I'm trying to get through these questions a little bit faster. Uh, let's see here. Jim Wills says, I'm long the 4.9 TLT 157 call. When is your recommended close date this week? Question mark. Uh, so Thursdays are when you can expect I'll take profits on TLT positions. And I'll probably just close out one per week um, when appropriate. Now, if I think there's an emergency, we need to sell it earlier, and then I'll send out an emergency alert, which would probably be as we approach 180 on the TLT. But I don't, I think now that the dust is settled and some of these over leveraged funds have been able to get deleveraged, not completely, but a little bit, that there's less risk of a TLT flying up suddenly, like we had seen that one, uh, that one day. Uh, so I, again, I'm expecting a slow, steady grind on the TLT and less chaotic uh, upshoots as we'd seen in the past. Oscar says, is the Tex a inverse tech bear? Yes, sir, it is. And FAS is an inverse bank ETF. Jerry says Federal Reserve is committing to using its tools. They have one tool, the digital printing press. That's right. Uh, Dollar says, do you recommend GDX put or GDX call? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the married put strategy. So I own the underlying asset then I buy the put that's right above the trading price, locking in my maximum loss. And then my hope is that GDX goes up more per share than the cost of my downside protection. So in my case, I paid 230 for the downside protection and um, needed to go up more than the cost of the put. So I want it to go up to about 2530 to break even. And then after that, I'm in to the profit zone. Karen says breaking the Senate vote may get pushed to Friday. Oh, gosh. Yeah, well, I'm not going to get into politics uh, in terms of what I think about the vote. Karen, what are you uh, what are you up today? Maybe it's not a. a uh, no, I'm here. Hang on. I'm sorry. I had to. I've got. Uh, let me look here. I've got a couple things. I'm in a couple different accounts, so it's a little split up. So give me. Sure. And I'll give you a hint. Let's see here. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um. Whoops. Sorry. I'll go back into this and go here. Um, all right, here we go. Yeah, unfortunately, I had another account and I put something in this one, so I can't give you a total. I have to split it up a little bit. Okay, so yeah, and I finally got that other spy on. For some reason, it didn't it didn't process on Friday, so I got the last one in today. Yay! Oh, okay. nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, let's see on the spies. Um, 
it's a little all over the map right now, but about nine, uh, almost 2,000. Uh, TLTs are up 27. Nice. <laughs> so about 29,000, sounds like? Yeah, yeah, it's about right, yeah. <clears throat> my uh, my silver's up 1,100. My triple Qs are up 10. Um, that's not yours. Let's see. Yeah, there was my boo-boo, sorry. <laughs> you don't want to tell me. I don't want to tell you my boo-boos. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and my EEM is up six, but you know this stuff keeps fluctuating. So, but yeah, it's sure. I'm, I'm 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 pleased. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. Awesome, I mean, on on this account, I I have to say that you know this is the one that's holding up steady or increase. And so compared to other stuff where I can't make some changes because of various issues that you know some people know, some people don't. I won't go into it. Right. This is the um. This is the uh, tried and true. This is the one that's stable. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate your all your hard work. Excellent, Karen. Well, we we appreciate you joining us uh, when you can. And and, and Karen, uh, you're a lifetime member of uh, the Pro and uh, Boot Camp. So just kind of want to give everyone a heads up. Uh, okay. and Karen, you started following us in June last year, right? Uh, yes. It was. I actually um, took the trial uh, for you know when the trials were. Um, were a little bit longer at that point. It took me a little while anyway to figure out what in the world I was doing. Um, but yes, I, I actually joined in June. Um, I took a little time to unwind things because frankly, I, I think I was fortunate enough to have that time to unwind. Sure. Um, yeah. And so when I was full in by December. Okay. Nice. In my in the plan that I you know as uh, completely diversified with everything that you guys had there so so yeah I'm completely in by December with um, the, the amount of money I wanted to put in and all the different uh, positions. What, what good timing! <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, that's what I'm saying on this one in particular. Thank God. Um, I just wish I had you know the uh, you know the ability to have done that on some of the other ones so at least at least this one's holding up you know and i can see the difference i mean you can look at the market and you can kind of tell the difference but you can see that you can feel the pain when you see it actually in some of the other accounts that i i can't touch right so, yeah and it's it's self-evident so nice. awesome yeah. so thank you thanks guys for very much appreciate all your hard work thanks awesome. yeah awesome. love it Karen. Yep, okay, let's you. let's see here. Mark Stoli, we haven't heard too much from you, bud. What are you up today? And let's see here. Roy Bomberger, uh, he joined us about a week ago. Let's 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 see P and L. Um, uh, I just walked out and then heard my name, but go ahead, Mark. <laughs> um, so uh, let me see on the portfolio builder stuff. It looks like I'm up uh, around forty grand today. Nice. And I got, got some other trades I did on top of that, and those are doing well too. Very nice, Mark. Very nice, Roy. Um, let's see here. And Mark, you started with us in in January, right? Or uh, December thirtieth, actually. Yeah, right at the very end of December. Yeah. Okay. What's the total open P and L right now from the time you started with us with with our stuff? I think last time it was around one fifty ish, two hundred. What is it today? Yeah, I'm probably um, close to up 200 since uh the end of january i mean the end of december so basically for january february march probably up 200 and that's not um all portfolio builder stuff that's basically all my trading but sure. a lot of that was guided by y'all or you know i took your ideas and added on and um but so i either directly or indirectly attribute it to you <laughs> awesome mark love it bud uh, and, and Dave, once you cross, uh, once you cross a million, we're we're flying to Dallas to to record a uh, testimony. Okay. Okay. You <laughs> Might be for, this uh, week. I don't know. At the same time, we'll just have a big party together. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom nice. party. How about we? Uh, how about we end it there, huh? Do you know, I'd like to get some other stuff done. Dude. Okay, cool. Should we check in from Roy? He just started last week. Okay, sure. Sure. So. Um, I cherry picked the trades like I was, everybody said not to, but I did it anyway because I had, the account was a mess and 
I can tell you in the spies, I'm up anywhere from 10 to 13%. I think I picked them up yesterday. And then the TLTs, I blended them in when they were low. And this is my second round. The first round I made a good, good pop on. I sold them last Monday. And then I repurchased them, I think Tuesday or Wednesday. And I'm up uh, 101%, 187%, 37% in those. Nice. nice. Have you cracked uh, six figures in profit yet in a week or two of following yeah, us? I'm still selling my equities and making sure that I was getting my feet on the ground, understanding what we were doing here. Sure. Awesome, Roy. Very so cool. If I, if I okay, Dallas. I would be. Very nice. Very nice. All right, Jason. Um, did you want to run through the options page one more time and we'll close it out or do you want to just go ahead and close it out here? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll quickly review the option. Uh, and thanks, guys, for, uh, you know, you're not required to tell everybody how much you make, but that does help us. We appreciate it. Okay, we have four products. We have our buy and hold, which uses no options, runs a thousand a year. It's great for investors under 30K and also who don't want to trade a lot. We have our basic membership, which includes the Monday, Wednesday, Friday webinars. And this is really ideal for account sizes between 30 and 75. And again, we're primarily trading the US equity markets um, exclusively. If you do upgrade to our pro membership, that's really the best package because you're gonna take advantage of the US treasury market, emerging markets, commodities, plus US equities. And when we overlay the complete strategy it really gives you a lot of advantages that, that most investors just uh, are completely unaware of, of how these different markets interact with one another. And that's what most of our clients end up in. As a bonus, if you buy any of our advisories, we're throwing in a free 30 day pass to our boot camp. And again, in the boot camp, you're going to learn how the financial system works with a Tuesday, Thursday update every week for life. It's not a it's not like a boot camp where you go for 12 weeks and you're done. This is something you're in for life. And on Tuesdays, it's con content via email. Thursdays, it's a live webinar. I also put out speculative trades. So if you're looking for those high risk, high reward trades with small amounts of capital, that's what you get in our boot camp on top of that. Nice. Awesome, Jason. Thank you. And David A. just wrote in. He said, Mike, not working, but thanks, Jason, for giving me the confidence to rip the Band-Aid off all my equities. Uh, new subscriber this weekend, did your trial um, a while back, uh, but didn't have time to work it then. I got into your TLT play last Thursday, dumped equities this morning, and got into spy puts correctly. He said on a 185K account, he's up $7,800 today. Wow. Very good. Well, guys, we don't win every week or every day, and we hop online uh, whether we're winning or losing. So I hope everybody has found great value in the in the webinar, and I can't wait to see you guys again this Wednesday. So thank every thank you everyone for showing up, and we'll see you again Wednesday. Thank you, Jason. Excellent presentation, hey, bud. Take care, guys. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate you, everyone. it, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Karen. Have a great night.